Today, uh, I'm really glad that you're here. We've got a couple of things for you. We've got a, a book called God is the Gospel. It's a, a book about his, uh, God Himself being the good news for our souls. And in this, we have a little welcome sheet. We'd love to get your contact details. We can put any prayer requests there. And then we also have a little booklet uh, called Ultimate Questions. It's ask the big questions of this life and answers them according to the Bible. It's a wonderful thing uh, to read through. And uh, not just guests, but anybody who hasn't read through this, you should take one of those. We've got them over by the, the windows uh, over here. Uh, keep your uh, bulletins open so we can follow through the service. we got a couple things that are different in the service today. Uh, our older kids are going to be singing a uh, song they've been learning and, uh, and also quoting some scripture. Uh, so we're not going to have our normal gospel, um, uh, a normal confession scripture and gospel scripture like we normally have. And then also I'm going to give somewhat of a fuller report on what's been a very, very busy week uh, as far as uh, property, uh, short-term property uh, opportunities for us. And I'll do that at the beginning of our prayer time to fuel our, our prayers uh, for the Lord. And so if you're a guest with us, uh, we've got a few things that are a little in-house business today, but uh, we're glad that you are uh, here with us. We also have kids' bulletins and coloring sheets, uh, which I think most of those have been passed out in our greeting time in just a moment. If you've got a little people, a little person and don't have those, uh, please uh, come up front and we can pass those to you uh, as well. A uh, reminder that we have uh, uh, our tutoring ministry Monday through Thursday here, 3 to 5, so please come and help uh, any day for as much of the day as you can. And also, I mentioned this via email, but we, uh, we need to honor the, uh, the request of the AutoZone folks that we're not using that parking uh, anymore. So if you see somebody coming in late and they're parking there, uh, we should try to uh, move their cars. There's plenty of, well, relatively plenty of parking 
out here as well. If you haven't signed up for one of our congregational transition teams, uh, and you're a member of regular tender and you want to do that, we'd really like you to do that. It would help the process of us moving out of here go smoothly. So uh, talk to me or talk to Francis after the worship service and uh, stick around for snacks and fellowship after the worship service as well. Uh, we're going to greet one another in just a moment, but Chris Capelli wants to tell us something. <laughs> uh, Mary and I were engaged on Valentine's Day. Oh. in late summer, I guess you would say. So we'll keep you posted on that. So hopefully we'll have 17th in Washington ready. We'll have our first wedding. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's exciting. Now let's stand up and greet one another. Find somebody you don't know and welcome them. <laughs> Chris. We love you. We love you. just one another, but also with you, Lord. Thank you for your Spirit's presence among us, Lord. I pray that you would prepare our hearts 
to meet you, to hear your voice. Um, I pray that you would soften our hearts to hear your word this morning. We thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. You've given us so much. We thank you for one another. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your word. I pray that your blessing would be upon, upon this service, that your gospel would go forth, and that we would be not only attentive to it, but also attentive to continue to minister it to those around us, in our neighborhoods, in our families, um, and wherever we go, Lord. So be with us now, and uh, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. The call to worship comes from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5, which is pages 503 and 504, if you're using our black church books. You got that there, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. Amen. The word of the Lord.
uh, some of us are going to continue singing now. So I'm not exactly sure logistically how this is going to work, but Sonia and Heather are all over it. No problem. So I want to invite the, the older Sunday school class. You guys are coming up here, and I'm getting out of your way. Hold on. I think I'm getting out of your way. Can I just
working uh, very hard during the Sunday school hour for a while on, uh, on this. It's very encouraging. Here's my Bible. The Bible that I Oh, no, 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 no. My Bible. You guys know what my Bible is? Uh-oh. Bibles are gifted. Which kid took my Bible? There it is. Oh, it's in the frame box. Uh, yeah, amen. Thanks, guys, for your hard work. And Sonny and Heather and uh, Joey and Griff and others that have been helpful with the kiddos. Uh, Andy and John McCarthy, which is really great. I'll have these guys lead us in celebrating um, amazing love, right? Amazing love of Jesus Christ. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're about. We're about the love of Jesus Christ in us and the love of Jesus Christ through us. That's why we, we exist. We've been saved by his love and now sent out in the name of his love to share dying love for forgiveness of sins. And uh, it is awesome to sing and celebrate. And it's awesome to talk about how uh, God is... Um, building us up uh, in his love and growing our numbers in his love. And uh, what I want to do is something a little different, but I think it's appropriate given this past week to give you just a, a little run through of kind of some things that have happened over the past week uh, for prayer. And so that you can understand some of what God's doing in our midst and so that we can um, uh, be a little more united in understanding kind of what's happened this week. It's been a crazy week, very exciting week. And then we'll move into our corporate uh, our corporate prayer time where I'll begin that uh, time of prayer and you guys are, are very, very welcome and uh, free to pray loudly so that others can, can hear you pray and then uh, Joey's going to uh, conclude that time and uh, just continue to be mindful of, uh, of uh, well, you we should pray for Heidi and for little Charlotte. Uh, I believe, they might know if they got home yesterday, we were supposed to. Okay, good. So they're home, they got home yesterday and uh, so just pray for all the adjustments of having your first child uh, in the home, uh, and for Charlotte, <laughs> in the comforts of the womb and having to deal with life <laughs> like we deal with it. Uh, and pray for them, and pray for Meg, who's on her 50% bed rest some of the time. The mornings are a little chaos, chaotic yeah. for but continue to pray for her and uh, for Abby and Wendy and their pregnancies. Um, you know, some, some general heaviness in our church, you know, it's easy to talk about all the glamorous stuff that all of us are, uh, are going through some heaviness, and some of us harder heaviness than others, so we want to uh, pray about those things in general and care for each other as we, we can, uh, as we uh, know what's going on with one another's uh, lives. Well, let me tell you a little bit of what uh, what this past week was like. I entered this week um, kind of assuming that, uh, which I should never do, I should have learned by now not to assume, um, that Marion Anderson was going to work out as a short-term solution for us, just because of some of the contacts that I had there, they were going to kind of talk to some higher-ups in the city. Uh, that we could use that for a short-term solution for worship. And um, uh, before that, I had uh, a friend of mine at Marion Anderson knows the pastor of Bryant Baptist Church, which is on 19th between Ellsworth, the street right below us, and Federal, the street below that. Uh, his name is Pastor Omar Epps. And I've gone over there a few times, knocked on the door, nobody's been there, but I, I got his number, sent him a text, and he said, hey, I'm Pastor John over here, this is my buddy, you know. So we ended up talking this week on the phone, and he said a few things that were interesting to me. One of them was that no one's ever contacted him. All the years he's been a pastor, no other church has contacted him to just fellowship and maybe serve together and pray together and, uh, and just get to know each other, which was, which was really kind of surprising to me. So he was very, very thankful for the phone call. And uh, I talked to him about our property needs and just said, hey, you know, I don't know what. We had a great conversation. I mean, immediately our spirit sort of gelled. And, uh, I said, you know, we've got a lot of craziness going on in our midst. And we could only have two more Sundays here, maybe. Uh, we don't know what's going on. Maybe your church would be part of the solution with us. And he was like, amen, maybe so. You know, it was just really, really wonderful. And he said, you know, I, I just, I am loving this. About half an hour of the conversation. I'm loving this. Will you come preach at our church the last Sunday of March and just come bless us? And will you bring all your church over? And uh, it's actually an afternoon service. These guys are hardcore. They have a morning service, then they have lunch, and they have an afternoon service. They don't even wait for the evening. They just keep going all day long. And, uh, and he asked if I would do that. I actually haven't accepted it yet because of some of the other things going on. Um, but, um, you know, how awesome is that? That, you know, another church around here would want to have us come over, have me preach, have us fellowship. They want us all to come over for lunch. So we'll talk about what that might look like. But it's just it's awesome. That's kingdom. That's not denomination. That's kingdom. And uh, that's exciting. Um, so I was very encouraging. I thought, okay, well, maybe, you know, the Lord will somehow use that. 
Uh, the next day, I found out that all the higher ups in the city that my folks at Marion Anderson were, were asking if we could use their property said no. And so Wednesday afternoon, I was thinking, we might have two more Sundays here and no short term solution. So the Lord started taking everything off. You know, the schools were a yes, and that became a no. Marion Anderson was actually a yes, and that became a no. I thought, all right, here we go, Lord. I know I'm a bungee jumping, and I know there's a cord attached to my feet. I just don't feel it right now. Uh, you know, but the Lord knows. I bet the Lord just kind of wiped everything, has wiped everything away for us so that we trust in Him alone. We're not trusting in the, the idea of a, of a place, per se. We're trusting in Him who will provide that place. And um, so I, I beat the streets a little bit on Wednesday afternoon, stopped by a Seventh-day Adventist church on 15th and Christian. Uh, they're not open for business on Sundays, and so uh, uh, then nobody was there, but I got the number and uh, also said I was going to call St. Charles Borromeo, who we had, we had tried them before. They have a, uh, a skating rink on 19th and Christian here. Uh, but in between those two things, I walked into the, to the Y, and uh, right here on, on 17th and Christian, and there was a, 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 one of my neighbors who I wasn't even thinking would be there, an uh, older lady who's a gatekeeper in our neighborhood and just loves our family. and. Uh, Oh, hey, Jonathan. You know, this is like a happy grandmother, real happy to see me, you know. And, and I told her the needs of what was going on. And um, and she, she really kind of grabbed me by the hand. And actually, Francis was with me at the, at the moment. And she walked us into the executive director's office and says, hey, this is my neighbor, Jonathan. Uh, their church is growing, and they, they, they need space. And kind of leaves the loop. And uh, so here I am with this lady, Michelle, and you know, this wonderful problem. And we start talking to her, and she just says, no, I don't do that. We're not even open on Sundays until noon. I said, well, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we could meet later in the day. I don't know, can we make it work? Said, no, I don't really do this. I mean, we don't have space for that. And it just, you know, it's not gonna happen. She was, and she wasn't mean about it. She just, it wasn't gonna happen. But I just kind of kept talking to her. As I keep talking, as you know. <laughs> and you can see, it was kind of like a Holy Spirit moment. I don't really know exactly how to describe it. God was just kind of softening her heart. She didn't have a hard heart, but just she wanted to keep talking and sort of ask us questions, sort of pursue us. And, you know, I don't, here we go again, right? I don't know why I'm doing this kind of thing. I don't know why I even entertain this. I'll think about it, you know, see if something happened. Probably can't happen. I'll let you know by Friday. And uh, so Thursday, I called the Seventh day Adventist church and I got one of their pastors, and he was like, oh, praise God, the church is growing. That's wonderful. Let, just send me the, email with the information. I'll take it to the leadership right away, and I'll, I'll let you know. I haven't anything back from them. I did right on Thursday night, um, and uh, you know we'll see if we can make it happen. We've done this before. Um, you know that would be great because we wouldn't be lugging a lot of chairs around, which if we ended up why we would. Uh, everybody have to bring their own chair to worship, their own blanket. You sit on a blanket. Um, anyway, I called, and so I just felt like the Lord gave us great favor there. Then I called St. Charles Borne. Oh, they were like, no, no, no. And then I started name dropping some of the gatekeepers in the neighborhood. And I was like, you know, if you and Father Ed, you throw out Father Ed, and that's that's a good thing. Uh, could make something work, let us know. And he was like, well, actually, let me take your contact details down. We'll, we'll see if something can happen. So I felt I felt really encouraged that, you know, there's kind of some maybe some possibilities to this places and I, I called Dan to let him know what was going on because he knew about the why and I hung up the phone with Dan and, and my phone rang and it said unknown and I never answered the unknowns I don't always answer the knowns but I definitely don't answer the unknown but I did and it's Pastor John hey this is Michelle at the why I totally want to make this work let's make this work I don't know why I'm doing this but let's make this work and I, I'm just sitting there going I don't know why I'm doing this I know why you're doing the same reason Jennifer did this two years ago when this property was taken out of our hands. And she said, I want to make it work for you guys. We'll open up early. If somebody open at 10, and you guys can have it. People start coming in at 12. And she just went through all this stuff. And I was I was thinking, I don't know if we're going to end up at the blind or not for a few months or whatever. But I, I was thinking the Lord was reminding us, I'm in your midst. I, I am with you. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to give you these, these moments of encouragement so you can continue to go on found out Thursday night that we're actually able to use this property through the end of March as well. So we don't just have next week as our last service. Lord willing, we'll be here through the end of March as well. So that's a full five weeks, you know, including today. Um, but that, that gives us a little breathing room. It gives us some prayer room as well. And as you know from, some of you know from the email, I'll be calling us to, um, not a legalistic way, but to be attaching fasting to our prayers for the entire month of, uh, of March. And I'll give you some ways in which maybe you can... Uh, you know, put down some things that you're used to in order to lift up more prayer to God. Um, 
So, I know this induces a lot of questions, and this is the middle of a worship service, and I don't want you to be distracted by this. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be encouraged. I need God to wipe everything away and then sort of put some things in front of us. We don't trust that the why is going to work at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which in some ways would be a, a better fit. We're not lugging chairs around and things like that. But God knows what he's doing, and he's guiding us, and he's providing for us. And we don't need to be anxious, and we don't need to be worried. We just need to be diligent with our work and diligent with the work of prayer and, uh, and continue forward. And, and uh, uh, earlier as we were praying with the adults upstairs, uh, Dan was praying about hard times maybe coming our way and, and how the Lord, the Lord, if there's anything that's uncomfortable about the times to come, it's, it's, it's an uncomfortability that we can handle as a church. God's not bringing it our way if we can't handle it in His name. And, and uh, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot this weekend about this property. I think it's been kind of emotional to me. It's going to be emotional over the next month. I mean, that, that last Sunday, you know, when we're worshiping, I mean, that'll be a, a weird thing to, to be singing, to be sitting under the ministry of the Word and know that's the last time right here. Uh, so we need to be praying. I'm happy to talk after the service about any of this stuff. We'd love to. Uh, but let's make sure we're talking, you know, vertically as much as we are horizontally uh, to the Lord as we're talking to one another. And this is also a fresh call for the, the, the transitional teams that we we, uh, we have to get this sort of transition period done, both short-term and long-term. We really need to kind of rise up and begin. Now that we have some details of timing and place and things like that, uh, we need to start assembling uh, those teams uh, more greatly for work that needs to be done. Um, but I, I want you to be encouraged. I mean, it was, a, it was a very, very, very encouraging couple of days, kind of spiritual training in some ways as well. So I you know, felt like we were moving all over the place. But um, we, uh, we won't be in the wilderness forever, just for, just for a little bit of time as we're transitioning. And God knows what he's doing. So... Um, I'm excited to watch God answer even more specifically the prayers that we're making about transitioning out of here. And remember what this is about. This isn't just about us being comfortable. This is about us growing in grace and other people coming to the grace of Jesus' salvation for the first time. That's what this whole thing is about. And so we keep that uh, our central focus, and, uh, and God will bless us and encourage us in all the ways uh, that we need that. So... Let me begin our prayer time, and let's let's join our hearts. Let's pray together. It doesn't just have to be about this stuff I'm sharing with you, but uh, let's just pray for each other. Father, we give honor and glory and praise and power and might and majesty to your holy name because you are worthy. You are worthy of, of our thoughts being directed to you and our desires being directed to you and our, our words being words of you. And uh, Father, we give high praise to your name because it is received as we offer it, not in our broken, sinful names, but in the glorious, matchless name of Jesus Christ. We come covered in the blood of Jesus. We come as your, your children, adopted, chosen, out of our sin, into your love and into your kingdom. We come as those, Lord, who, who seek to know you better, and seek to serve you better, and to, to watch you bring souls to yourself for salvation. And so, Father, uh, listen, please, to these cries, these prayers, these praises of your covered children. Dear Lord Jesus, if it's your will, please see we do get that big building for our church someday. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If it's your will, please see that Paul Tom's wife gets better so she can rejoin us soon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If it's your will, please see get the kids uh, about to be born and the kids in church and my family all grow up to be decent people and not make the same mistakes I made. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If it's your will, please see my buddy Joe continues to recover from his surgery so he can return to us at our home soon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If it's your will, please see me, my family, my friends, and everyone here at the church are okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if it's your will, please see I get a part-time job soon. If and when I do get the part-time job, please see that I don't have to work Sunday so I can continue coming to this fine church wherever it is. So thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to us. For in you our soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings we will take refuge till the Storms of destruction pass by. And Lord God, we come praising you today with thanksgiving. And 
with need. We pray believing in you, Lord. We pray you would provide worship uh, space for us when this uh, when this uh, property is no longer for us. Uh, probably at the end of March. Lord, I continue to lift up my friends uh, Maya, Melvin, and Alexander and pray they would come to know Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would continue to save people in uh, this neighborhood and uh, wherever we end up after this. We want to see people come to know Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would encourage any of the believers here that are downcast today, Lord, that you would encourage them by your Holy Spirit and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joyful things in our congregation, even as um, there's heaviness and suffering and, and struggle around the building. Um, Lord, I thank you for the um, wonderful blessing of Chris and Mary's engagement. Um, and Lord, I just pray for them in their wedding planning process that their eyes would be firmly fixed on you and how um, a wedding can be a great service of worship and a reminder of the great wedding feast that we are, are all invited to. And Lord, I also thank you for Charlotte and for uh, her safe delivery and her return home with Heidi and Andrew. And I pray for strength um, and energy for Heidi as she cares for Charlotte in these first few weeks. City, you've called us to this place to um, build our homes, build our families, to be part of this ministry. And Lord, we know that we cannot go anywhere that's out of your presence. You are uh, with us in, in the deepest ocean, you say, in the highest heavens. You're there and you see all of our needs. You know what we require here, Lord. Um, so we just pray for a real awareness of your presence because we know you are uh, you're here. You're watching us, you see, you know all that we need, and you will provide it for us, Lord, in your time. We thank you for this place and the way you provided it. We thank you for how you've opened the door um, to the why. I just pray, Lord, that as we move forward, the story of this church, wherever we end up, um, it will be your story, Lord. It will not be a story of what we've done or what we've accomplished or any of that, Lord. It will be what you've done, the doors that you've opened. And that is, um, as all who can see and look, Lord, um, see you move, see your hand open up doors, see your hand break down walls and barriers, Lord, that you would just be glorified through this whole process. Yes, we pray in your son's name. God, I thank you so much that our neighbor Marie is able to come and join us and that her knees are starting to heal up to the point that she's able to get out of her house and have her first trip in a car and to be able to to worship with us, God. I have I, I pray that she would be fed today and that this would help dispel a lot of the loneliness that she's been feeling trapped in her house. Uh, God help us to um, to minister to one another, to really meet the needs of everybody around us, um, especially the needs of the community. Um, we can't do it alone, God, and we know that we're supposed to encourage one another. So God, I ask that you would encourage her soul today and 
being part of our, our service here. And God, I thank you for the way that you've blessed our uh, business. I thank you for the way that you've helped me to be more brave about telling people that living water is about your son, Jesus. And not to then preach to them, but let that just sit with them. God, I thank you for the busiest week we've had. God, I ask that I would continue to praise you and thank you for these clients because there's nothing I can do to drag people through the door. These are all blessings from you, each person, God, and I'd ask that you would give me the strength and the ability to love them in such a way that their um, physical needs and uh, some of their spiritual needs are being met or kind of peaked to ask more about you. God, thank you for the way that you watch out for all of us. And I thank you for my daughter's fifth birthday. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these wonderful children that you've um, brought to Grace and Peace, um, the after school program, and um, who participated in Sunday school. And I thank you for Heather and Sonia and everyone else who gives up their time to um, lead these children to you and to show um, your love and um, pray for their eventual salvation. And um, I pray that you will um, allow me time to come and to participate in the after school program and thank you for allowing me the opportunity this week and um, to show me just how much that these children can you know, change my my perspective on things as well and, um, I pray um, for the salvation of my siblings and um, I pray that they will have the opportunity as well to hear um, of your love and um, to trust you and ultimately find salvation in you Father, I thank you for the warm welcome um, that we have from a neighborhood church here that's been established uh, for at least a few years in this neighborhood and uh, many years in a slightly different neighborhood. We thank you for uh, connections there. We thank you uh, that your kingdom is not uh, divided. Uh, but Lord, we're, you'll restore your kingdom to unity, and we, uh, we thank you that we can begin to see a little bit of that unity, uh, even with Jonathan's report this week. Pray for greater unity with, uh, with neighborhood churches around us, Lord, who are preaching the gospel, and that, that would be identity in Christ would be what unites us. And we pray for the growth of that continued growth for your glory. Our dear God in heaven, we uh, lift all these prayer concerns, uh, prayer concerns up to you, Lord. We thank you for uh, this season that you're bringing us through. We are really being made to, to lean more heavily on you. Uh, we're being reminded to lean more heavily on you, Lord. I think uh, just so many things that are going on, we thank you for Again, for the birth of uh, Charlotte, we pray for uh, pregnant women still in our midst, for Evie and Wendy. Uh, so we pray uh, for people we know who are have difficult choices set before them, not the least of which uh, those who are making choices about the building and our future uh, locations and stuff, Lord, but even in our own lives, I know we're faced with many things that are uh, challenges. Uh, we don't always know what to do, Lord. I just pray for clarity. I pray uh, that you would just help us remember that we can honor you uh, and often in whatever choice we make. And we just pray that you make us bold uh, to move forward. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, with thanksgiving for uh, for birthdays. For uh, Thank you for Sophia McCarthy and her dad and Lord. We pray that you would bless them and uh, just grow them in faith that this year would be a, a year where they learn so much more about you and their walk. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, the Donardos as they get ready to sell their home. And we pray for uh, Maddie, who's away. We pray for Evie with the boys. And, God, there's just so much, so much busyness. Uh, but that's a good thing. It's a sign of life. Uh, I think uh, just about children and how busy they are. And of course, they're busy, they're alive and growing. And we are alive and growing. We thank you for that. And we thank you for this busy season, Lord. We pray uh, for the people upstairs. We pray that you would, uh, even uh, as they're worshiping up there through the TV, they'd be blessed with uh, the presence of your spirit, Lord. We pray for other churches uh, around this world who are 
not even as fortunate as we are uh, to be packed into a room, but to be meeting uh, in closed places or places that are divided or uh, trouble uh, within and without of their church. Lord, we pray that you would just uh, bless your body this Sabbath day, Lord. That you would there are children around the world to be able to worship you uh, with, the, with the right spirit, Lord. We just lift our prayers up to you, boldly asking again as a child asks from their parents, knowing uh, my, my dad loves me, uh, he wants to bless me, and so I can ask and anticipate.